ChatGPT has rolled out something really, really cool. And you might ask yourself, so what? Well, if you stay here for a few minutes, you will know why you absolutely need to know how you can use this tool. It's called Code Interpreter and it's already live for all ChatGPT Plus users. And don't let the name Code Interpreter mislead you. This isn't just about code. This bad boy can do a whole lot more. Ciao guys, welcome back to my channel. If you haven't met before, I'm Laura, I'm a data analytics lead working in London. And in today's video, I want to show you the eight ways ChatGPT Code Interpreter can completely revolutionize the way you deal with data and pretty much make everyone here a data analyst. I will also cover the huge limitations of this tool that not many people talk about, so make sure to stick till the end. So first of all, how do you get started with this crazy tool? First off, as we said, you need ChatGPT+. Once you've got that sorted, look for the three dots uh, at the corner and head into settings. Under the beta section, uh, you will find the new code interpreter. Flip that switch to green and you're all set. Don't worry if you can't see it, uh, even if you got the paid version, just give it a few days. Remember that this is still the rollout phase. And when you're ready to go, hit new chat, select GPT-4, and make sure you got the code interpreter checked on. Now let's see what we can do with it. Okay, so the first case will be a game changer for anyone preparing for data science interviews. You know how these interviews go, right? Uh, they often give you a data set, throw in a few questions, and ask you to come up with a business case study. It can be quite time consuming and stressful, especially when you are racing against the clock. But guess what? Code interpreter is here to save the day. Okay, so here I'm opening the ChatGPT Plus chat and this is the new feature. So you see this plus button where I can actually import any type of file. So I import here a file that is called data CSV. And now I'm basically asking questions that I might have received during my uh, data interview um, that are related to the data set. And so these questions might be something like what are the top uh, five revenue generating products because we are working now with uh, uh, e-commerce sales data set, which countries bring in the highest revenue, how would you segment our customer base, can you predict next quarter total revenue and so on. And so if you give it a few seconds, um, the uh, chat will actually provide you with a, a very comprehensive um, answer. It will first of all check the data set and give information about what it contains. And as you can see, it's breaking down each of the questions and giving uh, an explanation quite comprehensive for all of them. And so now what I can do is actually going back to the answer and if I click on show work, then I can actually see uh, what's the what's the chat is doing on the on the background. And so this is, for example, a Python code that the chat created to answer a specific question. And you have that for all the questions as well. So, yeah, just crazy and so easy to see here how this has the potential to change data interviews forever because basically what I'm doing in just a few seconds I already have the answer for my data interviews questions so we all know the saying garbage in garbage out in data science quality input is everything and that's why we spend so much time cleaning our data sets but what if I told you that code interpreter can handle this task without any efforts freeing up your time for more exciting aspects of data analytics and again let me show you here an example so we'll use the famous uh, Titanic dataset from Kaggle, which is well known in data science community for its uh, need for cleaning, particularly dealing with uh, missing values. Okay, so here what I've done is uploading the dataset, which is called train.csv, and I'm asking a few uh, questions in the prompts. So I'm asking assess the dataset and provide me a summary, perform necessary data cleaning to handle missing values and any outliers, um, save the clean data to a new CSV file, and then provide me a summary of the cleaning process Process, what changes you made, why they were made, and the state of the data set after cleaning. And so I run this one. And so as you can see, another very detailed answer. And we can now check uh, the summary at the end of the cleaning process. So um, he's saying that he dealt with the missing values. So for example, the column age was filled with the uh, medium age in case of missing values. And then he also dealt with the outliers, for example, the age column. And so outliers were not removed, but their impact was reduced by using a robust scaler. So again, like very advanced um, method to deal with uh, outliers. Now, exploratory data analysis or EDA is like shaking hands with your data. It's a crucial first step where you get to know uh, your data set. 
its structure, variables, and perhaps even uncover a few hidden secrets. And so with the code interpreter, again, it's as simple as typing in a few uh, questions. So a great dataset for exploratory data analysis is the red wine quality dataset, which again, I found in uh, Kaggle. And so this dataset contains different uh, chemical properties of red wines, like acidity, sugar, pH, etc. And here's how you might use the code interpreter for exploratory data analysis for this dataset. And so after uploading the, the data, I um, in my prompt, I write uh, load the red wine quality data set, show a summary of the data set, including column names, date, um, data types, and account of missing values for each column, and also provide descriptive statistics for all numerical variables, and also show me the correlation matrix for this data set. And again, I'll uh, run this prompt, and as you can see, it just gives me everything that I asked for. Plus, at the end, this um, is building this very nice uh, correlation matrix uh, that, again, uh, would take quite a lot of time to, to do it otherwise. And now, have you ever found yourself looking at a chunk of code, scratching your head, trying to figure out what the code actually does? We've all been there, and again, the code interpreter here can be of a massive support. Imagine having a personal guide that walks you through the code line by line, explain the purpose of each function, unravels the logic behind those nested loops, and even comments on the efficiency of the code. And this is exactly what code interpreter can do for us. And so let's go for another example using this Python file that I found on GitHub. And so here I input the Python file um, and then my prompt is to download and load the Python file and then explain the code in the file, breaking down its main tasks um, and also provide at the end any suggestions to improve the code efficiency. And so here again, I have a very good answer with the uh, uh, all the details about this code and also is actually saying that um, the, the script is fairly straightforward and uh, efficient for its purpose and give me a few uh, suggestions on now to improve it and actually here I can also ask to create a comprehensive documentation for the code that is also a task that so many times is uh, very consuming and therefore overlooked by data professionals okay so this one will blow your mind I found this data set on Kaggle that basically gives you all the geocoding information for uh, cities in the US mainly the name of the city, the state, the latitude and longitude. And then I asked the chat to use this dataset to create an interactive map. So even though the chat could not plot the map on the chat itself, and I'm not sure if this is only a limitation of the beta version, it gave me the Python code that I, I run on my Jupyter Notebook environment. And this is the result, a fully functioning uh, HTML site. And so here, if I run the code, I see this uh, really beautiful map with uh, all the cities in the US. I can search for region, and then uh, as you can see, I can zoom in and see all the details, for example, here in uh, San Francisco. Um, and then again, I can uh, zoom in even more and then uh, zoom out on different areas. And again, this took me just uh, a few seconds to create. Now, another super cool use case is to ask the chat to create data visualizations directly in ChatGPT itself. So here I uploaded a data set about the Bitcoin price over time and asked to give me interesting insights and also visualize them. And so here again, I upload the uh, Bitcoin stock market analysis CSV file. And then I'm asking to analyze the data and visualize the five most interesting insights. And after this is completed, uh, here some of the charts uh, looks a bit weird, but overall this is a very good analysis that it generated in a few seconds. And now what I can do is just save these visualizations as image files if I'm interested. And also what I can ask is to personalize the chart that is created. So here, for example, I'm asking for change the colors of this chart using only different shades of blue. And here, of course, the use cases are endless as I can ask the chat to build different types of analysis and models like sentiment analysis, time series analysis, machine learning models, 3D charts, so images, and so on. This one again is mind blowing. I gave the chat a data set about Netflix movies and TV series, and this is what I asked. So based on this Netflix movies and TV series data set, create a PDF presentation, giving me the most interesting five insights that you can find. The PDF should have the first page as the title of the presentation and having one insight per page from page two onwards. And I want the question you're trying to ask in bold, then uh, the summary of the insights and then the data visualization showing the insight. 
Okay, so let's open the PDF file now and see how it looks. So here I have the, as I asked, the first page is just the title of the uh, presentation. And then the second page, how the movies and TV shows distributed on Netflix. So I see this bar chart and also the insight summary in the, in the same page, exactly as I asked. Then if I uh, scroll down in the PDF file, I see another bar chart with uh, which countries produce the most content. And again, uh, insight at the end. And then as the next page, I see how has the amount of content released changed over time and I see uh, again a nice line chart with the summary of the insight at the end. Okay so let's go for the next use case. So you probably know that performing analytics on a structured data set like an Excel or CSV is one thing but doing the same with unstructured data like Word or PDF documents uh, is a completely different story and sometimes it's just not possible to work with uh, those type of files. And so here I tried asking uh, ChatGPT to create a clean data set from a PDF file that again I found online. The PDF shows a list of invoices and again the result is incredible. So I had to spend a bit more time on this one to give more details on the information inside the PDF but this was the end result, a clean CSV file created from a PDF and now obviously I can go on and create the insights based on this. Now the last use case is something that unfortunately I cannot show you uh, as ChatGPT uh, as per the time I'm recording this video has restricted the access to web feature but when it becomes available again uh, you can ask the chat to visualize data from uh, publicly available sources and this means that you don't even have to spend time finding the data but the chat will do it for you which is again a very powerful feature and that's why I wanted to include this as well. Now apart from these amazing use cases it is also very important to point out the limitations of this tool and I have at least four to go through which I found online while doing my research. So the first one is limited access to document content and so due to token constraints the code interpreter can only use part of the provided documents and this limitation means that for longer documents this model has to guess the content and interpret from the available context and so this means that the accuracy and understanding of the document um, may be compromised of course. The second one is the lack of persistence for files and generated code so this code interpreter does not retain files links or code blocks beyond the single session and so as a result if the session times out or it's uh, terminated any previous files or links links or code blocks generated during the session may not be accessible and users would need to uh, re-upload or re-enter the le relevant information. Number three is the absence of the dedicated business intelligence tools like Tableau. While it can interpret and execute code related to data analytics and visualization, it may not offer the comprehensive features and capabilities of more specialized BI tools. And then the last one is data security concerns. So while the code interpreter is a handy tool, it's not a secure platform for handling sensitive data and this applies both to your personal data but also the data of your company in case you are thinking to use it at work. And on this point actually bear in mind that uh, there was a recent data breach involving ChatGPT just to demonstrate that this tool is still very far to be a safe environment. And this is it for today's video. This is what I managed to do with the code interpreter and I'm sure this is only the start of something that can truly revolutionize the data science and data analytics world as we know it today. Guys, I'm really curious to see what are your thoughts about the code interpreter in the comments down below. And if you have any questions, leave them down there as well. As always, if you found this video helpful and you want to stay up to date with the latest on data science and analytics, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I will leave here in the screen some other videos that you might like and well enjoy the rest of your day. Ciao for now and see you in the next one.